Peggy 16. Beyond Light kicks off the next trilogy of stories that we're trying to tell with Destiny. The player is going to go on a journey to discover the true nature of light and dark. It's the beginning of players learning more about the darkness than, in fact, going so far as to wield it. It's about leaving comfort and safety behind, walking a different road than one that you may have believed you were destined for. What makes something bad? What makes darkness dark? Who's right? Who wasn't? How are those learnings going to change the, the characters that you have gotten to know over the last six years? Beyond Light's really the beginning of a new adventure. Guardians, for the longest time, have been bathed in the light, sort of this altruistic force fighting back evil. And now we're starting to move into that gray area between the light and dark. If the darkness reaches out, we must reach back. I will not sanction this. In Season of Arrivals, the vanguard is divided. You have some characters telling you, you know, we should fight these ships, and we have other characters who are saying, no, 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 we should find out what they want. We should get to know them and understand more. But it definitely comes to a head. This next year in Destiny is really just about how all the different characters and factions are reacting to these disappeared destinations and what that means as the pyramids have arrived in our system, not for the first time, but for the second time. We're gonna see the return of a character who's been absent for a pretty long time in The Stranger, and boy, does she have a lot to say, and she has a lot of time to explain. When I know more, you'll know more. She has shown up to encourage us to take on the darkness, and the only way to truly stop it is to work with it. And here comes our guardian, right on time. Why did the darkness invite us here? Europa is literally like a time capsule. Europa is huge. Killer destination, freezing cold. Desolate. Some of the most beautiful spaces I've ever seen in a video game. There was a lot built on Europa during the Golden Age, and a lot of that was built underground. Clovis Bray had some research facilities there, really pushing the limits of technology and innovation there, maybe stepping into some things that we shouldn't have. Under the eyes, all kinds of secrets. I'm so excited for what players are going to find. The storm on Europa was actually something we've wanted to do for a long time. We wanted it to feel harsh. The weather system is so awesome. Like, you're walking through an open space and all of a sudden things start happening. Coming across like Fallen or Vex for the first time, you can barely make out the glow in their eyes. The sound of the wind, the ice, will change based on what the weather is looking like. You'll actually feel every piece of the environment changing around you to match the storm. Europa itself is a pretty foreboding place. Aramis is there in advance of us, and she set up a forward base. She has lieutenants who have gotten their hands on stasis, gotten their hands on the darkness, and they're learning to wield it. One by one, we will rise again. And so I think her motivations are really interesting, too. Today, we begin breaking free from our chains. Aramis really challenges a lot of the ways that we think about light and darkness. She's going to make you think about your relationship with the traveler. She's a compelling leader, and she has a vision. And especially after the collapse of their society, people, I think, the Fallen wanted someone to follow. 
Is the light going to be enough? I think we've seen that we need some new tools to fight our enemies with. Maybe it's time to fight fire with fire or ice with ice. Stasis is, you know, not just a set of new supers, but it's a new damage type. We've got Solar Void Arc, and now we've got Stasis. The idea for Stasis all really came back from the gameplay idea of freezing someone. That was kind of the theme that everyone kind of rallied behind. You know, Dima's an amazing concept artist, had some images that really kind of put us on the right path. What really was landing with that was the more crystalline notion. So when we say cosmic ice, that's kind of where the cosmic comes in. Once he freezes solid, I'm able to hit him again and just shatter him into pieces. The pieces break apart and explode in those sharp shards that can damage you. So all of that kind of came together when we landed on that theme. Stasis is going to not only change the way that you can attack or approach combat, there's also some really great ways that you can upgrade it. Then you start getting into like the more interesting parts, things that we're calling aspects and fragments, which are additional ways to modify your subclass. Aspects are a little bit more potent. And then the fragments are the things that are class agnostic. But depending on what your class is and depending on what your aspects are and how you want to play, you're probably going to be starting to select different ones in there. This is just the beginning for Stasis. We're going to continue to expand on it. We're just excited for players to get their hands on this. When we're creating a new palette like Stasis, we do what we call a source jam. Everyone on the team blocks out about a week where we can say, OK, you're going to go out into the world, microphone recorder, record anything that reminds you of cosmic ice. That gives us the palette that we can build the eventual sounds out of. I found personally that the best way to do it was at night. But doing scream screeches and blood curdling yells is a little scary at night. Then I had a really rumbly stomach, and that also was recorded. I think there was also a breast pump. You have to make use of what you got. In Beyond Light, we have new exotic weapons for you. No Time to Explain is coming back. Instead of just being the gun that refills your magazine when you land precision hits, you actually get a little time portal, and it starts spitting out rounds alongside you. You can actually have that on top of the arc soul, so you can be your own little mini firing squad you build for it. Another one we have is the Lament. It uses up your sword's energy to give yourself a new combo that ends up in a big spinning slash. Probably the largest selling point for a lot of people is that it slices right through barrier champions. I think the largest draw for most people is actually going to be the fact that it is a chainsaw sword. Maybe. Yeah. <laughs> For Beyond Light, we really wanted to create exotic armor pieces that formed a key part of your build around which all the other parts of your build could revolve. For example, the Titan gets the Icefall Mantle, which is a set of exotic arms that looks like it is crafted from Golden Age tech. When you activate it, you sort of slam your arms down, create a burst of stasis energy, and then you cover yourself in an overshield. The Warlock Exotic is Necrotic Grip. If you are facing a wave of thralls running at you, you can nail them with your melee attack, and it starts to burst and sort of cascade through the whole group. There's a lot there for newcomers coming in, too. If you've got a friend who hasn't tried it out, it's a really great time to jump in on New Light, that entry experience for free players. 
Last year, when New Light launched, we brought back a small portion of the Cosmodrome. This year, we're bringing back a much larger portion of the destination. It takes some of the experiences that started with original Destiny 1, but puts them and stitches them together in a different way and adds new things and tells a, a different story. What you're going to meet in this new opening experience is a character with not one, but two names from Fast and the Furious, Shah Han. Thank the light. I didn't think we had other Guardians on patrol here. What I love about the Cosmodrome is it feels like destiny distilled. Season of the Hunt picks up where Arrivals left off. Other forces are taking advantage of the darkness to make their move forward, including Zivul Rath, a sister of Oryx, and she's taking this opportunity to build up an army. And we're working with Osiris to try to stop her. Osiris goes out, stumbles across these hive growths that are driving combatants crazy. Osiris is in trouble, and of course, you're his only hope. We warned you it was going to be dangerous down here. Impossible. We finally catch up to what we saw at the end of Forsaken where we saw Aldrin being brought back to life by a ghost. Aldrin, who now refers to himself as Crow, he doesn't know what he did. The slate's been wiped clean when he was resurrected as a guardian. We know what he's done, and we know what he could be capable of doing, so now we're going to spend some time watching him go back and forth, and that's going to question how we look at him, how we look at ourselves, how we look at the light, how we look at darkness. In Season of the Hunt, we're partnering with the Crow and Osiris to take down the High Celebrant. It's creating these cryptoliths around the system, and those cryptoliths are attracting Elixian Cabal and corrupting them. So Zebu Arath is essentially corrupting herself and army, and it's our job to put a stop to it. I'm really excited to see Zebu Arath fleshed out more and to find out more about her relationship with Sabathun and what that means for year four of Destiny. Sabathun has been placing dominoes. And at the end of year four, she's going to knock down the dominoes. We're going to see what she's doing really up to. And so this year, she's putting the last pieces in place. Destiny is just a really incredible world. And there are so many stories for us to tell. We have a lot to look forward to, beyond light, then the Witch Queen, then Lightfall, and all the seasonal content between. We feel like we've got a really great way to bring people together. Working through COVID and working through some of the other turmoil in the world right now has been really challenging. I have to admit, I've been pleasantly surprised with how well we've been able to get things done. We're committed to your characters and your community of players. We want to meet you where you are. I think the thing that excites me the most about Destiny's future is how much it's rooted in where we come from. Seeing villains revealed and finding out secrets that we've been hinting at for years. When I look at the team that we're building and continuing to grow and hire, the new leaders that are coming up in Destiny, that gets me super excited. Destiny's best days are ahead of us.